this meeting the Alexander County Board of Commissioners into session at this time on the June the 21st 20 of 21 uh, we'll have the invocation by Chairman Larry Yeder the Pledge of Allegiance by Vice Chairman Ronnie Reese if you all would please stand I kind of most gracious that we come before you this evening we appreciate the things that he, you have done for us we'd ask you to look after our local emergency services personnel our local law enforcement and those officers that serve across the state and the United States, be it our military personnel both at home and abroad, be it those folks that were affected by the, her, the tornado and the tropical storm that came through and has finally blown off to the northeast and out into the ocean. We'd ask that you'd be with us tonight as we try to do the things that would make Alexander County uh, a great county. The state of North Carolina, we'd ask that you'd be with those leaders to Help them that they would do the best they could through your guidance to make this a great state. Be it our national, federal leaders, that they would take care of our country and make it a safe and a prosperous place to live and to take care of our children. For we ask all these things in thy name. Amen. Division, belief, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let me be seated. Does any commissioners have any reports tonight? Uh, I don't know how many of you attended the Friday night uh, evening on the court, uh, courthouse lawn. It was very well attended. I think most of the folks had a good time. As you know, the Alexander County government helped sponsor that in conjunction with the Head Night Center, and it was a very nice program for, uh, Friday night, and I think the folks really enjoyed themselves, and people were ready to get out. They uh, had a real good time and had, had, a, had some ice cream up there for sale and uh, some hot dogs that they were selling, and I think most of the folks uh, had a uh, really, really good time. On Thursday evening, I had the opportunity to attend the managers, mayor, a meeting in uh, Morganton is a very good meeting, well attended, <clears throat> and uh, there again there was a tremendous amount of people that were out and came to the meeting and talked about what they were going to do with the money that they were going to receive to uh, from the government over this uh, 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 pandemic, the rescue money from the federal government, and most people were very interesting and they talked about that. What they'd like to do is use it on infrastructure for water and sewer. Uh, very interesting meeting, and what usually lasts for about two hours uh, lasted for about three hours because I think there again, folks uh, that represent their counties and their communities were ready to get out, ready to talk to one another, to discuss things face to face because this was the first meeting that we had had all year, and uh, because everything else had been Zoom. So it was a very good meeting and a lot of information came out from it from the different leaders in different counties. Does anyone else have anything? If not, gentlemen, uh, your agenda is before you this evening and you've had a chance to look over that, I'd entertain a motion to approve the agenda as is. Make a motion to approve the agenda as given. Second. Motion is made and second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise, the motion carries. And <coughs> item number one on the agenda tonight is a public hearing. It's a condi conditional use case, 21-5, Daniel and Beth Cerusis, uh, Bill Rogers, Chief Cage Enforcement Officers. Gentlemen, I'd ask that we'd go into a public hearing. I'd entertain a motion for that at this time. Make a motion that we go into a public hearing for um, conditional use case, 21-5, Daniel and Beth Cerusis. Uh, motion's made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made. Second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. The motion carries. As most of you know, in this public hearings of this of this nature, it's a conditional uh, uh, use permit 21-5. Uh, these things are uh, uh, treated just like it would if it was, you, you were going to be in court. Each person that uh, testifies or speaks. Uh, will we'll be sworn in by the clerk and we will proceed from there at th this time. So Mr. B uh, Bill, if you would come on up, sir, and 
and we'll ask you to be sworn. You ready? Mm -hmm. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Gentlemen, before you tonight is conditional use permit 21-5 for an outdoor artist market. The applicants are Daniel and Beth Sarusa, the owners of the property in question, 449 North Carolina Highway 16 North, are also Daniel and Beth Sarusa. The parcel ID number is 3759-199727. The project area is 2.81 acres. The land area to be disturbed is 2.81 acres and the existing land used is vacant. Zoning districts within uh, 100 feet to the north are highway commercial, to the south are highway commercial, to the east are highway commercial, and to the west are highway commercial. Land use is within 100 feet. To the north is the Alexander County Maintenance Garage. To the south is a residential parcel. To the east is a residential parcel. And to the west is a residential parcel. Daniel and Beth Sarusa are proposing a 2.81 acre open area artist market. They are proposing 30 vendor spaces with a maximum of two events weekly. Proposed hours are from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Tuesdays and Saturdays from June through October. Outdoor flea markets are allowable, are an allowable use in the HC zoning district with a conditional use permit. The proposed use is not listed in the zoning ordinance use matrix, matrix but is similar to a fee, flea market in that it is open to multiple vendors and is outdoors. Based on the submitted site plan, staff recommends the approval of the conditional use permit with these conditions. One, Alexander County environmental health approval of all relevant sewage disposable and water supply. All solid waste be contained and disposed of in accordance with the solid waste ordinance. Operating hours be limited to 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Operation shall be limited to not more than two days a week. A driveway a permit may be, must be obtained from NCDOT if required. And no outside storage of goods or wares shall be allowed beyond operating hours. For board consideration, does the use meet the requirements set forth in section 154.140.4 of the Alexander County Zoning Ordinance? The use for which the permit, for which the conditional use permit is sought will not adversely affect the health or safety of persons residing or working in the neighborhood of the proposed use and will not be det detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to property or public improvements in the neighborhood. not know if the applicants are here. Uh, Bill? Yes, sir. I take it, question number one, it does meet that? Yes, sir. All the properties around, are those, those are houses, correct? With the exception of the maintenance garage. Okay, but the ones up on the highway. Mm -hmm. Bill, once you posted the property, did you have any negative comments whatsoever from anyone? I was not told of any by Mr. Harris. Thank you, sir. As this is a public hearing, anyone in the audience who would like to speak may come forward and speak at this time. Uh, the only people would have to be sworn in in order to speak. What, Bill, what's the gray spot on the big map? You'll have to forgive me. I do not have the map in front of me. That gray, the uh, 
that's the area for the um, re rezoning. Okay. Because they have built their home, the Sarusas have built a home, and there was originally plans submitted for a welding shop to be located on that property, and they submitted their plans once and did not resubmit them. So I guess that idea has gone away. So we'll have that that whole piece of property will have two different zoning designations. I guess they will split. Okay, I think that gray piece of property will go to Highway Commercial. Okay. So there will be one driveway entrance and exit at the same place? Is that right? Yes, yes, sir. Because right now to get to the home, because the home just got completed, you get off of Highway 16 and you travel basically in that strip and then their home is over. says that they planted trees and on the plot for the parking just help me if you will sir like is that parking up against the Millsaps and the Hicks property or is it down on the other side or yeah, is there a barrier between the, the parking and the other properties <coughs> And again, the only thing that I have is what they've noted is that they've already planted a border of evergreens along the property line, so I would assume all the way around. The way around. Again, you'll have to forgive me. I did not prepare all this. Mr. Harris did. And my, my only concern would be there at the Millsaps and the Hicks property that, you know, that they had some type of break there. I don't think we're looking at any kind of rambunctious or rowdy group, just, you know, most likely a lot of people, which would be great. Mm -hmm. it's gonna I believe you could, in the rezoning, you could um, require a buffer. You want to want them to be able to use their property ever how they see fit, but I also want the other people to be able to have the solitude of their property as well. I assume it'd just be gravel parking lot. Is that? So there's really, our code has nothing for flea markets or... Well, it does for flea markets, but it doesn't require paved parking or anything like that. Okay. And I think that would kind of defeat the purpose of having, because you want people to park their cars right where their mm -hmm. vendor spot is and stuff, so... Also notice in here that they talked about these 10 by 10 tents be like, I would say that uh, those would be the flame resistant type tents. If I'm not mistaken, well, that's what it would have to be. Well, the fire code is pretty pretty detailed Detailed on that. You have to have, uh, you can only have 700 square feet of them without a 20 square foot, without a 20 foot wide buffer, mm -hmm. fire buffer. And um, the f code only requires they be fire rated if there's gonna be electric or cooking underneath them. Right. But any tent over or canopy over 200 square feet has to be fire rated also. The fire code's pretty extensive on them. Correct. But I don't know if our fire marshal will be inspecting this every weekend, so. In the bathrooms, you know, where they'll be, I mean, I don't know where this parking lot and restroom is in reference to the property. So, any idea about that? Let me look. So there's two porta potties, and it's there at the bottom of that corner of that one parking lot. But I'm not really sure where that parking lot is. My guess is that that parking lot is setting like this with this map. But I believe the um, at the top of the page that would be Highway 16. Can't be. Cause, well, there's no other road in the... Because the Millsaps and the Hicks property is... They would probably have to be there. Well, I don't want to be trying to change any roads. I think it's right there. Like 
think that. that's the way it is. That's what I think too. And then they would put that road down the middle for a driveway in between the parking and that. So there's bathrooms right Jesus. there. Ma'am, I saw you just walked in. Are you with this public hearing? Okay, thank you. Just wanted to check since we'd already started. Thank you, ma'am. Chairman Henry, so we don't have uh, any party here at all? We do not. It'd be nice to be able to ask them some questions. <clears throat> well, upon approval, though, then once you approve it, it being a conditional use permit, if you'd like to see buffers around the property, you can you can request that and then put that in with the. Uh, well, I, have a, I have a couple questions or statements. The porta potty location um, that's at the end corner of the parking lot. My personal opinion is I think that should be pulled over to the property line in between the residence and the vendor vehicles in that parking lot area. And then we should put a uh, buffer or barrier in between it and the uh, houses out front. If that's possible. And now, the, you know, also, un okay. now, and also, you need to understand that if you have a lot more questions and you'd like for uh, to get more information from the people that put the application in, due to the, situ the circumstances that have developed in the last couple, two or three days, uh, I think that, and I'll say that because of the fact that Bill's trying to present this and. Uh, he's only going by the information that he's been presented here and if you would have questions that you'd want to come up we can table this until the next meeting uh, to get the questions that you may have verified and, and cleared so that we do not have to advertise or anything else we can just come back and reopen the public hearing at that time if there's questions or concerns that you might have that you uh, not getting the proper well not the proper information just not getting the additional information that you're looking for and I can also send my staff out and have them examine the property and let us see exactly what's out there yes. and where things are going to be. Yeah, I don't that's that's the way I was trying to put it, Bill. And uh, I mean, because I think you know sometimes uh, uh, on this one, I mean, I know the situation and, and extenuating extenuating circumstances. And that way, if they have questions or concerns, then uh, we can present those to you and make sure that you get them so that you can have your staff to go out and. Uh, Recheck the area so that you'll we'll all be more familiar yeah, exactly and, what they want. And let the services know too. We're, we're not against what they're doing. We just want to make sure we understand and that that it's right and fair for the other property owners too. Yeah, because it appears to me the po the port. If I'm looking at it right, the porta potties are going to be right up against someone else's property. Two, correct. Two, two other properties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd make a motion to close the public here. Continue, sir. To continue. Yeah. Yes, to continue. Mm -hmm. Second. Table. So there's been a motion to continue 
uh, the public hearing and there's been a second. Is there any discussion? There me, there for at this time I'll ask the if you're in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Uh, item number two, public hearing, nuisance case of 134 Fire Lane, Stony Point, complaint number 2020-1101, Bill Rogers, Chief Code Enforcement Officer. Gentlemen, I'd ask that there be a motion to open the public hearing. Make a motion to open the public hearing on nuisance case 2020-1101 and 2020-1104. Second. Motion's made and second. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor, indicate raising your right hand. Motion carried. Bill. Okay, the first case is um, a continuation. The board tabled um, the last time we came before you for 134 Fire Lane because there was a ch legal change of ownership and we had to basically start from scratch. Um, in the packets that you were given on that night were several pictures. I've had staff go back out and re-photograph the property last week. Um, we have, um, at that time, the commissioners, you spoke with the new property owner and he had said he was gonna start cleaning it up and we have had no effort to clean up that site. Um, are these your pictures from last week? The, these, are, these, are the mo these are the most recent pictures. Um, that single wide is, has been placed on the property unlawfully. There were no permits. Um, they are running power unlawfully. And they have not, the gentleman did not adhere to what he said he was gonna do and start cleaning it up. He has not cleaned it up. The trailer, I believe, is gone. That trailer right there. Yeah, that's about all that's happened. We, we continue to get complaints from neighbors and we ask that you order abatement. I feel like it was pretty plain last month and uh, gave this guy a little bit of a break and was very clear about our expectations. So as far as I'm concerned, I would say that we proceed. That's just me. Does anyone else have any statements or questions on this case that they'd like to ask Bill at this time? Bill, on this complaint, 2020-1101, mm -hmm. I am going to take care of that one first. Okay? I believe that's the only one on the agenda. That's, all, that's what right. I thought. I thought it was yeah. the only one on there. Yeah. But we'll take care of that. Now, uh, do you have anything that you'd like to say along with in conjunction with Bill? No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Gentlemen, anybody have any questions of Bill? As this is a public hearing, anyone in the office has the opportunity to come up and speak. The only thing that you need to do is come up and speak and give your name and tell us your opinion about this. <coughs> there not being anyone present at this time, uh, gentlemen, I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion we close the public hearing. Second. Motion is made and second to close the public hearing. All those in favor, indicate for raising your right hand. All opposed, likewise, the motion carries. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, I'd entertain a motion. Make a motion to proceed with abatement of property on uh, 134 Fire Lane, case 2020-1101. As you've heard the information, nothing's happened. Second. Motions are made and second. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. The motion carries. Carry on with what you need to do, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate the job you do. Thank you. Whitburg, 
No, excuse and me. Where, where are we with just curiosity with the other case? The other case, Bill, if you'd like to speak to that, please. Two other cases, 184 and 152. 152 is the property that is legally owned by Matt Taylor that he has legal title to, and he has begun cleaning it up. Um, he's actually done quite a bit. 184, the property at the end of the street that is in a trust, we need to involve legal assistance with that because of the way the trust is set up. Um, by law, we have, we have to serve somebody with papers, and right now we have no, that piece of property is just kind of floating in the air. Nobody has legal custody of that piece of property. So it's going to have to go back before a judge to find out who has legal custody of that property because Mr. Taylor does not. Very good. But he is making progress on his property. On um, 152, the one he legally owns. Good. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks. Appreciate it. Item number three, public hearing, CDBG-1, infrastructure grant number 12-D-2947, Stony Point Elementary School Wastewater Project. Mr. Rent French. You call the public hearing and just... I will. Okay. Yeah. And at this time, gentlemen, I'd, I'd appreciate it if I uh, have a motion to open a public hearing on this CDBG infrastructure grant. Make a motion we open a public hearing on the CBDG infrastructure grant number 12D2947, Stony Point Elementary School Wastewater Project. Motion is made. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is made and second. All those in favor, in the capital, raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. The motion carries. Mr. French. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Alexander County was awarded $894,750 in grant funding through the CDBG I program to provide critically needed public sewer to the Stony Point Elementary School. Prior to the project, project the school had been served by two septic systems, one installed in 1975 and a second one installed in 2002. Drain fields for both systems are in, pl are in the play yard and ball fields which are used on a regular basis. There is uh, very little documentation of the 1975 system. The reason for the installation of the second system in 2002 was the construction of additional classrooms. Prior to the, this sewer project, the school cafeteria used disposable plates, utensils daily, limiting the amount of discharge into the septic system. The town of Taylorsville has agreed to operate, maintain, and treat the wastewater system. The CDBG grant was used to pay construction and engineering expenses for the project, while Alexander County used local funds to pay for project administration expenses. The Alexander County CDBG I Sunny Point Elementary School wastewater project installed a new pump station and generator, 2,180 linear feet of force main sewer lines and approximately uh, 820 linear feet of gravity sewer lines to serve el the elementary school. The project also included the abandonment of two existing septic tanks. Um, there were income surveys were conducted for each of staff and students at uh, the elementary school. There are 290 students and 48 faculty at the school the total number of households that have at least one person at the school is 278 households. Several of the students have a parent that works at the school. Of these households, 210 completed the survey, which is 75.54% of the household benefiting from the, for, uh, from the project. The total number of people residing in those households, those 210 households is 867 benefit to low and moderate income persons for this project is 65.9 percent. Project budget, Alexander County selected the lowest responsible bidder and the construction contract was executed by Lock Lane Construction for $644,710.57. There were a total of two change orders to this contract detailed below. Um, 
contractor requested a change to project design to open cut the road adjacent to the railroad tracks and install eight inch pipe in lieu of boring underneath the, ro the road as originally agreed upon. Net decrease of the change order was $4,141. Change order number two was the final adjusting change order with the bid item quantity adjustments due to quantity changes or design changes. The net decrease of this change order was $5,623.68. Total change orders totaled $9,764.68. Original construction contract, $644,710.57. Uh, the total construction contract, in, including change orders, was $634,945.89. The total grant project, including construction and engineering uh, expenses, was completed for a lower price than expected of the $894,750 uh, grant funds awarded. A total of $741,863 was spent on this project. The remaining $152,886.75 will be deobligated and returned to the state. Local funds in the amount of $78,243.93 were spent on administrative expenses for this project. And I think that, that concludes the final um, information. Uh, according to my notes from the Western Piedmont Council of Government, the next step would be to allow for public comments about the project. Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. Well, at this time, I'd ask if anybody in the Audience has any comments that they'd like to make regarding this CB, CDBG grant 12-D-2947. Uh, There's no one at this time that would like to make comments. This was a good project. Very good. And he came in under bid too. Yeah. That's the best part. And, it, and the fact that it's built, that's the, that's the very, very best part. But it's very good. It's a good thing. And we appreciate the work that the staff and everyone put into this to make that happen in Stony Point because it's been needed for several years. So there's another movement in the right direction. So that's very good. One last question. Do we know if they crushed the, the old system out there and filled it in or anything, or is it just still sitting there? I think it was filled in. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Anybody else? At this time, Jim, I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion to close public hearing for the CDBG <coughs> infrastructure grant 12D 297, no, 2947 Stony Point Elementary School Wastewater Project. Motion is made. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor of closing the public hearing and take raising your right hand. Thank you very much. Uh, now, Mr. French, I believe that we also need to close this out at this time. Is that not correct? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Approve the final report as presented, yes. I think. Right, and that will take care of closing it out. <coughs> Gentlemen, I'll entertain a motion to approve the final report. Make a motion to approve final report on the Stony Point Wastewater Project. Second. Motion is made and, in, made and second. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor indicate raising your right hand. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, item number four, Wittenberg Access Trail Improvement Bids. Mr. French, County Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in your packet, you have a Summary from McGill Engineering, uh, two bids were received on May 13th, um, and you have those in your packet. Uh, the why are you contracting uh, Wiesner, Idaho is the lowest responsive, responsible bidder, the total base bid amount of $61,153.68 and is recommended by uh, McGill Engineering and the staff to do the Wittenberg Access Trail improvements. Um, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Last question. Yes, sir. Um, 
both both parties were given the exact specifics of the trail yes sir and bid on the exact same yes sir even on the bridge part yes sir big difference there is the the group that is the low bidder has did all the trails for us at Rocky Face Park and they're really good at doing and doing a very efficient job so I take it they have a base in North Carolina not just in Idaho they'll come out here shortly after we award this and if you do award this and start working on the trails later this year yes sir thank you so gentlemen I'd entertain a motion make a motion that we accept the bid from why are you contracting for the what's going on at Wittenberg access trail improvements we do have a second second motion is made in second any further discussion there being none all those in favor indicate by raising your right hand motion carried very good thank you item number five board appointments and reappointments mr. Rick French County manager thank you mr. chairman two appointments or reappointments tonight first is I care Board of Trustees appoint Michael Ratchford for three years region E aging Advisory Committee reappoint Billy Walker for two years thank you sir gentlemen I'll entertain a motion to approve the two appointments make a motion we approve Michelle Ratchford for I care and Billy Walker for region E aging Advisory Committee as presented do we have a second motion is made in second any discussion there being none all those in favor indicate by raising your right hand motion carries thank you very much item number six budget ordinance amendments 88 through 92 mr. Rick French County manager thank you mr. chairman budget amendment number 88 is to budget for close out of Sunny Point Elementary School wastewater CDBG project the obligation of 152,886 in CDBG funds that will not be needed and transfer remaining cash balance of local funds back to the general fund number budget amendment number 89 is to budget for reimbursements to the county water and sewer fund for the EQ loan eligible expenses that were paid from the county water and sewer fund prior to the use of a separate project fund for the water system extension project these eligible expenses were included in the DEQ loan draw number one received in July of 2020 number a budget amendment number 20 of 90 I'm sorry is to adjust general fund revenues based on year-to-date actual experience decreased attention center estimated revenue for housing out-of-county inmates due to the health risk associated with COVID-19 the county has not been accepting inmates from other counties increase estimate for interest earn and increase estimate for distribution from the state for Medicaid hold harmless revenue number 91 is to adjust the multi-year capital project budget to add a splash pad to the courthouse park project and 92 is to increase the budget for fiscal year 2021 general fund transfer the park to the park improvements project for the estimated cost to add a splash pad to the courthouse park project the park improvements are being accounted for in a multi-year project fund the general fund transfer $175,000 to the park improvements fund in fiscal year 2020 and I might add that the it's not only splash pad there's some playground equipment if you look at the estimate that's further on and fencing in a small picnic shelter and the last page is a is a what the splash pad will look like I'll be glad to try to answer any questions mr. chairman mr. mr. French and fellow commissioners I think all of you know that 
in the last several weeks. We've heard the community talking about this splice pad, talk about the splice pad, and all along we really wanted to do the splice pad. And I think that we're all in a total agreement that this is something that should happen to this park, and we're really excited and thrilled that uh, we should be able to make sure this splice pad happens and and uh, the picnic shelter and along with the uh, outdoor recreation uh, uh, facilities for young kids. So it'll be an exciting time for uh, Alexander Ken and for these young folks. Mr. Prince, does the water, is it caught, treated and recycled or is it disposed? Disposed. Disposed. Mr. Prince, yes, what's the <coughs> estimated completion on the entire project? Probably end of November. Of this year? Yes, sir. Uh, there are some concerns about receiving some materials that might delay it a little bit, but that I know during the um, first meeting with the uh, contractor there was concerns about some steel, for example, that they were concerned they, re they would get in a timely fashion, but right now we think end of November of this year. I want to reiterate to the public that uh, saw the commissioners approve this here shortly that this was a two-year process but um, the commissioners have heard the voices of our folks out in the community and if they approve this then it's being moved all up into one year's time here and hopefully all materials will come in and hopefully we see a lot of families out there enjoying this That's right <laughs> this is true yeah, I think Mr. French I think it'd be a good addition to our park and you know we had originally talked about it but funding was a little different but we've had some things now that come up and I think with our budget as long as we can stay you know focused on staying within our budget there is room for do, doing things and that's what the public's going to see that you know we hear them just as uh, Commissioner Pennell said and want to do you know uh, things that are good for the county and I think this will uh, move us forward a lot. I know uh, my grandkids and kids, they travel to another area for the splash part time, but this will be good, convenient for everyone right here in town. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a good thing, good addition to our park also. The, the picture that you have in front of you is of the Valdez splash pad, and it'll be designed very similar to, to this. Okay, looks good. Jim, at this time, I'd entertain a motion to approve the budget amendment. One, one more question, sir. On uh, budget amendment number 90, when will we begin taking other inmates again? I'm not sure that, Commissioner Peel. I'm not sure. I think we actually have, have one from Catawba, but... I, I think as far as what we were doing before, I'm not sure exactly the date. Because it's a considerable decrease in revenues. It is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And built for doing that, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Chairman, yes for a motion? Yes, sir. Make a motion on budget ordinance uh, amendments. From number 88 to through number 92, that we approve as stated. Right, the motion's been made. Do we have a second? Second. The motion's been made. Second. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. The motion carries. Very good. Number seven, item number seven, another business, but uh, Mr. French, County Manager's report, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple of things to end the report just to mention uh, before I do, one, to let you know that uh, we met today um, to the Alexander, for the Alexander County Christmas Parade. The plan is to have the Christmas Parade on December the 4th, as we did, as we did a few years ago, and going back to um, that process. Um, um, Two other things to mention. You have some information on the op opioid settlement the NCACC has provided. That's in your packets. And our hope is to have an attorney from the NCACC here at our July meeting to talk to us about that. Um, the other item is there is a letter 
from Soil and Water Conservation District Chair Bill Chapman and Emergency Services okay. uh, for um, stream restoration. And I'd just like for you to take his information now. Um, my concern about it, and I certainly know it's something that's needed, is that even though it's a FEMA grant, we pay all the upfront costs and are reimbursed. And there are uh, things that have happened several years ago that we still haven't been reimbursed for. It's a 75, 25, the county pays 25%. And in the notes it says uh, it's the, the um, emergency uh, watershed or the assistance is from up to two up to over a million dollars so we'd be we'd have at least two hundred fifty thousand dollars in it but we would have all we have to pay the million dollars up front before we got any kind of reimbursement so I'd like for you to look at this and we'll bring this back to you in uh, July if you want to do this we'll have to do a budget amendment and all that start that process so we do have you know you've approved one USDA NRCS emergency watershed protection program funds for three sites and that is also something we have to pay up front which is about a hundred thousand dollars for three sites so it again it's something that's needed but the amount of expense is great will have a great impact on us so anyway that's all I have I have some couple of things for closed session mr. chairman very good sir uh, Gentlemen, the, uh, the uh, public hearing that we had earlier on the conditional use permit, the lady that actually filed the conditional use permit is, is now here. Uh, if you folks would like to listen to what she has to say, or if you still, uh, that, you know, whatever you all would like to do, I just happened to notice that she walked through the door. And, uh, uh, or we can wait and let Bill gather the information and bring it back at the next meeting. I know that we've already agreed that we would table it to the next meeting, which is uh, what we voted to do because of the information that we were lacking. But we can do whatever you all choose that uh, uh, stand by what we've already done. I wanted to see what you all thought about that because we can do that if we'd like. So just an opinion from you all, what you think? Ma'am, here, here, here's what we did, okay? Yep. There were several questions that we had about the, 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 the conditional use permit okay. that we asked our uh, bill who takes care of our zoning ordinances and those things to go back and get the information from you all and to discuss it and his staff go out and look at this. That's what we did because there, you know, we had no one speaking in opposition or for it, just the presentation. So at this time, and, and we, we voted to table it till the next meeting so that it would give him the opportunity okay, to gather that more information so that you will know. And that's, that's what he and his staff are going to do. And I know you made a special trip up here because you got here and you were a little, you know, in, in, in all, no, I know, I could tell, okay? And that's why I noticed you were here. But I think since we've already said that we would table it until the next meeting, okay. I think that's what we'll stand by mm -hmm. and uh, let Bill gather that information and give you an opportunity to visit with he and his staff in order for us to make a proper decision on the conditional use permit. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Thank you, ma'am. We do appreciate it. Thank you, ma'am. He'll, he'll, he'll speak with you if you don't mind stepping back there with him. Thank you. We have the consent agenda, gentlemen. <coughs> I'd entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Make a motion to approve consent agenda. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is made and second. Any uh, further discussion? If not, all those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, gentlemen, we need to have a short closed session. Uh, we will uh, go into closed session and we will reconvene for the primary purpose of adjournment only. No decisions will be made. This is under North Carolina General Statutes 143-318.11, paragraph A subsection four, five, and six, economic development, contractual, and personnel, and I make that in the form of a motion at this time. Second. Motion second. Is there any further discussion? If not, all those in favor indicate raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise, the motion carried. Thank you very much.